Today we're going to talk about how tension affects our sexual function and why we can't get an erection when we're nervous. Along the way, I also want to talk about how our autonomic nervous system works. It's actually a little bit of a difficult concept, but once you understand it, it's incredibly helpful in understanding our lives. And through that, I'll explain why we modern men have trouble sleeping, why we have digestive problems, why we have a stiff back, and why we have erectile dysfunction at a young age when it doesn't even seem like it's coming. Let's start by talking about the relationship between tension and erectile function. I'm going to recite a scenario where nervousness can cause erectile dysfunction. I can't get an erection when I haven't had intercourse in too long. This is a common statement among many. Or, I've started seeing someone new, and things aren't going as planned. In other words, this guy has erectile dysfunction every couple of years, every time he changes girlfriends. Or, I'm trying to have a baby and I'm trying to plan a date and there's a day that my gynecologist has pointed out. But on that specified day, he finds himself unable to achieve an erection. Or, I know a guy who had intercourse one time when he was really tired, and he ejaculated quickly. Afterward, the worry about potentially ejaculating prematurely again causes him to immediately lose his erection. There are also people like this, or you're at work and your boss yells at you too much, or you bought some stock and it's dropped so much, or you sold a house and it just went up in price as soon as you sold it. This internalized anger then becomes a barrier to achieving an erection. When I look at these situations, they're all different, but they can be summarized as tension, anxiety, stress, anger, and so on. The reason these emotions lead to erectile dysfunction is their activation of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nerves are the nerves that respond to stress and help us overcome or avoid the situation. When a danger suddenly sneaks up on us, and we see it right in front of us, and we feel like we can fight it and win, we fight it. We're like, oh my god, I can't do this. There are two lions over there, and we can't fight them. Then as soon as you decide to run away, you use all your energy to help them run away. Fighting, fleeing, or both require a significant amount of energy. And it requires a lot of situational judgment. So that's when the sympathetic nervous system kicks in. The sympathetic nervous system is characterized by sharpening the mind and turning up the motor nerves. Your heart rate and blood pressure both increase, at the expense of shutting down other functions that aren't related to survival. This energy must be channeled into both judgment and physical agility. An elevated sympathetic nervous system over a prolonged period can lead to poor digestion, compromised sexual function, and sleep difficulties. These are all governed by the parasympathetic nervous system, which are not immediate survival functions, allowing the sympathetic system to override and suppress them. In my last video, I talked about the four stages of how an erection happens. The second of those steps was the parasympathetic nerves. The signal from the brain to get an erection comes down the parasympathetic nerves. However, when stress, worry, tension, or nervousness become overwhelming, the sympathetic nerves activate and inhibit the parasympathetic pathways. And then when you feel libido, that signal doesn't get to the manhood. Consequently, an erection does not occur, so a man needs to be relaxed before having intercourse. Minimizing stress is beneficial. You don't have to think, I have to do it well, I have to do it long, I have to show something, I don't ejaculate quickly, or anything like that. It's important not to dwell on duties, responsibilities, or any stressors. When we live in caveman times or when we live in the woods, the sympathetic nervous system helps us survive danger. It helps us hunt, it helps us eat other animals, it helps us fight or run away from danger when it suddenly comes our way, and it also helps us to feel anxious or nervous in anticipation of that situation, and our heart starts beating faster, because there's a sudden danger, and to react immediately to that danger, it's going to fire up a little bit earlier, like a warm-up, so our sympathetic nervous system doesn't just respond to actual danger, it also responds to anxiety. In primitive times, it was a force that worked where it was needed, protecting us from danger, and that anxiety was spaced out over a certain amount of time. A bear attack, a snake slithering, or another tribe suddenly appearing and using tranquilizer darts. These incidents aren't constant but occur sporadically every few days or months. It was a life or death kind of threat but with a certain amount of cool down time. Anxiety in contemporary society takes a different form. Today's world doesn't give us a moment's peace. The world is constantly and rapidly changing. Just as you adapt, everything changes once more. Not only is the speed of change a problem, but the scope of what we need to respond to has also broadened. In the past, adapting to your village was enough, but at some point you had to adapt to the city, and then to the country. And now we have to care about what's happening on the other side of the globe. Just when you think it's enough, another worry finds us. There was tension and anxiety in the lives of primitive people, 
but modern humans experience these in a completely different scope and duration. Importantly, this kind of anxiety activates the sympathetic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system, composed of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, functions like the sun and the moon, performing opposite functions. Just as the sun outshines the moon during the day, when the sympathetic nervous system is strongly activated, the parasympathetic nervous system cannot exert its power. Therefore, the life of modern humans, immersed in continuous tension and anxiety, leaves no room for the parasympathetic nervous system to function. But let's think about what happens when the parasympathetic nervous system dominates our body. It sends blood to the organs for good digestion. It relaxes muscles and lets the body rest. It reduces the heartbeat, brings calm, and helps us sleep. The parasympathetic nervous system dilates the blood vessels in the manhood, causing an erection. Now do you see why modern people are always suffering from indigestion, stiff necks, feeling tired yet unable to sleep, and even though they're not yet old, experiencing weakened sexual functions and feeling down about it? So what effects can running have in such situations? Running first trains the autonomic nervous system to alternately operate the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system smoothly, without malfunction. The distinct activation of the sympathetic nervous system for aerobic exercise is followed by the clear enhancement of the parasympathetic nervous system for rest. When these alternating actions occur clearly and consistently, the autonomic nervous system functions optimally. This can prevent a lot from being startled or anxious over small problems or from the sympathetic nervous system kicking in unnecessarily. It develops the ability to respond flexibly to stress. Moreover, long-term running lowers the heart rate. Marathon runners typically have a low heart rate because their hearts are very strong. Imagine a car with a high engine capacity. A car with a high capacity moves forward quickly with just a little pressure on the accelerator. Similarly, a person with a strong heart can create efficient blood circulation without having to run much. This means the heart can beat more slowly. Having a slower heartbeat means our body and mind are stable, which reduces the feeling of anxiety when stimulated. We maintain calmness more easily. When we feel anxious, we experience palpitations. Anxiety makes us feel someone's presence. When we are stressed, we feel someone's presence. Whenever something bad appears to happen, we always feel our heart racing. If this data accumulates in our body later on, we start to feel anxious whenever we feel palpitations. Some people climb a couple of stairs, feel their heart race, and then suddenly feel anxious. If this worsens, it can lead to panic disorder. However, running makes you feel incredibly refreshed. You feel as if your body is full of energy. Imagine feeling refreshed and energized, even as your heart rate increases. Subconsciously, you come to understand that an increase in heart rate or palpitations doesn't necessarily signal something negative. This can also occur in positive circumstances. This disrupts the cycle where palpitations instantly trigger anxiety, thus preventing the negative consequences of such a reaction. Furthermore, running enhances your overall physical health. As you lose weight, your appearance naturally improves as well. The youthful appearance you recall from your 40s, perhaps still showcased in your Facebook profile picture, begins to re-emerge. As your body strengthens and your appearance transforms, you naturally become more confident. This newfound confidence makes you more assertive. Your communication becomes clearer, which in turn reduces your experience of anxiety, stress, and related issues. Thus, the physical and outward confidence fostered by running serves as a shield against external stressors. Given these reasons, when patients with mild symptoms present with anxiety-induced erectile dysfunction, I thoroughly explain the benefits of running to them. Running can not only alleviate symptoms but also transform their entire lifestyle. Indeed, running is an exceptionally beneficial form of exercise. Mastering it can provide a lifelong benefit. I will delve deeper into this topic so ensure you watch the third episode as well. One more thing. Our channel is affiliated with selling high-quality, trustworthy men's health supplements that are beneficial to our subscribers, made in the USA from 100% natural ingredients. If you're interested, please check the link in our profile and the pinned comment. This video is part of a series planned in four episodes. If you found today's video helpful, please subscribe, like, and set up notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thank you for watching.